Quotation by John Ruskin. John Ruskin says, Shakespeare has only heroines, no heroes. It's a famous quote, oft quoted quote, an uh, important line. Shakespeare has only heroines, no heroes. What does that mean? She heroines are the? And it's your first class, I think. <laughs> Good one. <laughs> so, see, <laughs> write down these lines. There are important things. Shakespeare has only heroines, no heroes. It's a famous quote by John Ruskin. We are done with Shakespeare, so there are certain things, certain studies done on Shakespeare. We have to deal with it. So what if they ask you this question? The basic question is, who said that? So the easy question, it's John Ruskin. Tough question, what does this mean? So first thing that you have to understand, Shakespeare has characters who are dominating in the stories, primarily in tragedies. In tragedies, the dominating characters, they are all male, heroes. But if you go for the comedy, all the female characters are the smart characters. So when we talk about Shakespeare has only heroines and no heroes, we have some exceptions of tragedies only. And then we'll reach to tragedy also. Who are the most important characters in tragedy? In Hamlet, who is most important character? Hamlet himself. Gertrude is not given that much importance. Ophelia is not given that much importance. In Othello, the central figure is Othello. Desdemona is not that much given importance. In King Lear, it's Lear. Though we have three female characters. But coll and collectively, these three female characters can challenge King Lear. But we are going for one lead heroine. Cordelia is again not a heroine. In tragedies, women, they have been ignored. But when we go to comedies, who is the most important character in Twelfth Night? It's Voila. Voila is the leading character. Voila leads. Duke Orsino is not the hero. Malvelio is not a hero. And there are no other characters. In Merchant of Venice, though the title Merchant of Venice is for Antonio, but who is the game changer? Portia is the game changer. And then she has been mentioned as the smartest person, beautiful person. She has also taken advance to win her love. She gives some signals to Bessenio. Somewhere she is a strong character. In As You Like It, Rosan is the most important character. Midsummer's Night Dream. Who goes to her father to seek permission and then elopes? Harmia. She is the one who takes stand. So in all the comedies, Shakespearean heroines are dominating. Now let's go for the feminine aspects. So first thing, it's the easy explanation that Shakespeare has written comedies. The comedies have heroines. Heroines are dominating in comedies. In tragedies, heroes are there. Heroines are ignored. But now let's go for the feminine side. The tragic heroes, their downfall resulted because of Hamarshia. And those Hamarshias are feminine. We are not in the topic of feminism, so we can go for a difference. In feminism, they say there are no differences. It's androgenous. Man, women, they have same emotions. But then there are certain emotions which are actually assigned to, attributed to female, women. Jealousy, possessiveness, it mostly goes for women. And remember this, this is not a feminist lecture, right? So, <laughs> Othello somewhere is jealous in love. So if we see in a patriarchal narration, it is actually attached to women. Women get easily jealous if the husband, if the loved one is talking to someone else. Jealousy is the factor there. King Lear, flattery. The first woman to be flattered. If it was flattered. Flattery, if uh, King Lear wanted to be praised, to be flattered, that's again a feminine aspect. Then go for Hamlet. Indecisiveness. There's a fem feminist critic, she says women is often confused and uses question tag. 
there is a feminist critic uh, right now I'm missing the name i would have told you the name also but there is a feminist critic she says women is often confused and that's why she goes for multiple tag questions questioning again and again is it is it women is often confused indecisiveness the girls can tell me who says no and who says yes okay no but just one so rest of you have said yes women is often confused really yes when if you are saying yes why are you confused they look at all the aspects just like you were trying to answer one of my student answered many years back she said women doesn't want to make mistakes that's why she wants to be 100% sure before doing things that's why she goes for multiple questions hamlet's indecisiveness is again a feminine quality attributed to women we are talking about the ancient system masculinity femininity so muscles bodybuilding swords and archery man women singing music painting knitting sewing all these things not we are not dealing it in a present mindset so they used to have these emotions attributed to women so hamlet is again having the feminine emotion he is confused indecisive not able to take decisions king lear wanted to be flattered othello has possessiveness and now the ambitions ambition can be for both of them and here in lady macbeth is the most dominating character the one who revolves the plot turns the table it's lady macbeth so this is why john ruskin says that if you study shakespeare because shakespeare has been praised and this is the reason shakespeare has been called homosexual he has been called gay the reason behind this because it's not about his sexuality it's about his emotions how a man that also in the old times ancient timings how a man could feel a woman's heart a female emotion it is not possible to feel a woman's heart see we live together like i hope you understand this is man this is woman right now but if we say men have their own quality women have their own quality they are having some qualities which are similar in both right so what we say if a man says okay i can understand you he is going for this similarity but can we say that a man understand actually what a woman is going through this is pure feminine identity this is pure masculine identity this is androgyny mixed so even if a man says that i have good idea about women or i have been with women i know women i understand he cannot portray exactly same emotions shakespeare is question for this thing that how could he feel the emotion of a woman what do you think it's not easy and you cannot read these things in books books cannot teach you these things in the modern feminist theories we will be studying the concept under the name called joycens this theory is called joycens propounded by french radical feminist helen sico french radical feminist helen sico joycens the modern french feminist author helen sico she says that that women has always been portrayed by male authors the first author the earliest authors they were all male chaucer shakespeare spencer milton john donne dryden how many female authors we have if you go to augustans there also you'll find that there are just some writers they were the members of blue stocking groups before blue stocking group we have just one writer afra ben recognized famous otherwise just minor writers no famous authors then female authors come in victorian age but again four or five in numbers and they were also again dominated by male george eliot was a female author her real name was mary ann evans and when they questioned that why did you choose a pseudonym a male pseudonym she was a female author so when they, when she was questioned that why are you not writing with your female name she says because i wanted to be taken seriously so if i am a woman nobody will take me seriously 
then in moderns we have some female authors but again counted then post moderns we have some female authors so imagine the first literature the early literature they are rarely we have uh, we are rarely having female authors so rosalind voila desdemona portia and others all the characters hermione hermia they have been portrayed by a male so if a male is trying to develop a character of a female how far he has justified it and if you go for shakespeare people say that he has far better approach than others so how could shakespeare feel those emotions emotions cannot be copied and emotions cannot be read through books until unless you yourself have felt it so there are studies like this shakespeare and sonnets also give us the idea that shakespeare had either he was bisexual or homosexual there is a proper study in victorians was shakespeare gay got it will you be able to defend the question in assertion and reason shakespeare has only heroines no heroes female feminism fem uh, feminine identity is dominating the next important point is we are moving to the next one till the test papers will be uh, given to us the theaters in elizabethan age there are questions asked in this topic also there are many questions asked from these topics theaters so first thing please remember the elizabethan theaters were copying the idea of roman theaters because it was the age of drama rise of drama the roman theaters concept and roman theater had the style called amphi amphi style amphitheater they would have one stage then stairs in rising order ascending order you must have seen these kind of things in your college or your universities and sometimes they would have one single wall right the wall which is called our you know used for the characters to come on stage so the characters they take entrances on stage you must have seen these kind of things when i was teaching in dayal singh evening college there uh, there was this amphitheater system ram just also has amphitheater the present day theaters are like this only if you go to cinema hall you see that there is a screen and the chairs are in rising order the stage and rising order chairs that was roman amphitheater style so if they ask you a question that elizabethan theaters because that's the best way all the audience can see what's happening they can have a better view of the stage right so what kind of style they were using roman amphitheater style now there are some theaters we have to write down the details the first theater in elizabethan the first private theater the name of the first theater was the theater so there were two siblings barbeys brothers bro uh, john barbeys richard barbeys they sought permission to open the theater in 1572 so they went to elizabeth to seek permission permission was asked in 1572 they were represented by lord lesister believed to be another love interest of queen elizabeth the first theater which was opened in england in london it was opened by the barbeys brothers john Bur uh, barbeys richard barbeys so they went to seek permission so who represented them in front of queen elizabeth lord lesister with the support of lord lesister they went to seek permission to open the theaters 1572 they asked for a public permission pub public theater permission for public theater private theater the permission was given to them they took some time to construct 
and within four years, the first private theater for public was launched under the title The Theater. The first theater in Elizabethans. Private theater for public. That's called The Theater. So if we ask a question like, the, was there any other theater before this theater? Then, what was the theatrical system before then this public theater? Earlier the theaters were being performed in the churches. We have studied that church premises, they were used to perform religious plays, religious dramas. After that, they used to perform privately in the courts for the kings, for the queens. So again, theaters were there. Theaters came out of the church. But then it was the total, in the total control of the kings and queens. They would have their private performances. Performances for the royals. But then it got opened for people, for anybody. And yes, just like us, we are having our cinema halls. If you go for the chair, the first one, just very close to the screen, the prices are low. And if you go for the best seat, the prices are high. So if you remember old cinema halls in your villages, we used to have system balcony, box, and the ground. So they used to have the same system, the ground. They would have some mattress, and the commoners, those who would pay in some coins, they would sit down. Then the others, they would have some different prices, they would have chairs, and the royals would have their cabins, the box system that comes from the, for the royals. Abraham Lincoln was short, watching a play in his box. You have seen the movies in box? No, no. Okay, we had a theater in our uh, area. So we remember whenever we would go with our families, the box would have eight to 10 seats. So the box would be like more costly than other seats. They would have separate doors. You enter, you can lock the door. You are eight to 10 people sitting and you have your small windows like this. Then balcony, then lower balcony, then the ground. So most of the college students, school students, they would sit to the lower grounds. Ticket like 5 rupees, 8 rupees. The box was costing around 30. The last thing that I remember. So this was the concept here. Now the, when theater came to public and people started spending money on these things. Remember this was the time of Elizabethans. They were extremely rich. They had a lot of money. There are theaters, they, cost, uh, they can cost you 10,000, 12,000 for one movie. So who goes for those movies? The rich people, they don't care. For them, two, th two tickets for 20,000 is okay. They go for it. So technically, they were rich. So they would go for the movies. Now, one company motivated others, and many private theaters came. A competition increased. Here, even the actors and actresses, uh, I should say actor only, no female characters allowed, female actors. Even the actors started joining private companies. Earlier, the actors were having groups like Kingsmen, these are the companies of actors, Kingsmen, Queensmen, Admiralsmen, Eton School Boys. There are many other companies. Lordsmen, Chamberlainsmen. These are the leading companies, companies for actors. Actors were also associated to these groups, these companies. Kingsmen, Admiralsmen, Queensmen, Eton School Boys. Queensmen were the personal actors of Queen Elizabeth. Queensmen, personal actors for Queen Elizabeth. Later, she will gift her Queensmen to Lord Leicester. Queensmen, the personal actors of Queen Elizabeth, she gifted them to Lord Leicester. So Kingsmen, Admiralsmen, Queensmen, Eton Schoolboys, and there are many other names. Chamberlainsmen, Chaplainsmen, Lordsmen. Everybody had private companies, private theater companies. They would supply the actors. They would have their own theaters. The first theater was the theater. Now let's go for some other theaters. There are many other theatres. Write down their names.
the hope theater the swan theater hope swan globe i'll make you write more yeah there were many theaters like this write down these names red lion theater this was also there red lion theater so technically we don't have to go for these details but just write down one or two lines for them the red lion theater was favorite of the red lion theater was favorite of the royals favorite of the royals and would perform comedies and would perform comedies then the globe theater globe theater was built by 1599 they started be, uh, building it by 1596 got built by 1599 got destroyed by same time globe theater they started making it by 1596 finally done in 1599 then got destroyed there usme do alag alag aag lagi hui hai ek final aag aur lagegi baad mein 1613 mein bhi ek aag hai this theater was globe theater was the property of globe theater was the property of giles allen his name is important because globe theater is very important this property was of giles allen see first fire was there in 1599 then again in 1613 jab usko rebuild kiya tha tab bhi hua tha globe theater has called that it has been cursed there is a mystery behind this it is said that globe theater is cursed globe theater ko curse laga hua hai you know tom stoppard there is a modern uh, writer post modern writer tom stoppard he wrote shakespeare in love so uh, what happens there tom stoppard in shakespeare in love shows a story that shakespeare was in love with a girl called voila remember voila so shakespeare was in love with voila and voila was a good actress she was damn good she wanted to perform a role on the stage but female actors were not allowed so actresses or female actors were not allowed on stage so she keeps on requesting shakespeare that please for sake of love do this allow me and don't worry i'll not be caught i'll be in disguise and people will not find me so finally in love shakespeare says yes voila goes goes on stage tries to perform a role in the disguise but queen elizabeth is watching it elizabeth herself finds it out that this actor is a girl so when she probes she actually finds that this is voila elizabeth is angry and to punish shakespeare the punishment is that voila will be married to someone else this is the punishment this broke shakespeare's heart and <laughs> this is the curse on globe and shakespeare then goes for 12th night where voila again plays a role of sebas uh, cesario in disguise this is the connection shakespeare in love right so when you go to london don't watch a play in globe theater it is cursed next one swan theater swan theater known for performing revenge tragedies mostly admirals men would perform in swan admirals men would perform in swan theater the next one the rose theater the rose r o s e rose theater this rose theater was actually one of the most lavish theaters very costly so only the richest people would go for it the rose theater was very costly the owner of rose theater philip hanslow the royals would have separate seats with two attendants if you go to watch a movie in rose theater you will have two uh, attendants they'll be like having fan for you this kind of thing that was very lavish one the next one the fortune playhouse it would perform religious plays only the fortune playhouse 
it would perform religious plays puritan plays religious plays the curtain theater but remember there is no uh, concept of curtain curtain rose is the name of place actually so curtain theater the name comes from the area curtain rose curtain theater it was in the area called curtain rose that's why it's called curtain theater the theater is has a history during a performance ben johnson killed an actor in curtain theater during a performance ben johnson as an actor ben johnson was an actor a muscular man he killed a fellow actor well well the name is not important we can write it gabriel spencer ben johnson killed a fellow actor gabriel spencer that incident took place in curtain theater the, the black friars theater the black friars theater the black friars theater known for child actors known for child actors the child actor there were two companies queens chapel and eton school boys these two companies would provide child actors and eton eton school boys these two companies were providing child actors now the most important thing patent theater the most important thing patent theater patent theater is not a theater it is a category for the theaters patent theater patent theater means the theaters who had a patent to perform only tragedies the theaters who would perform tragedies only it's a question of exam so when this question came in exam even i had no idea about this question for me also it was a new learning patent theater so the theaters used to perform tragedies only those theaters were called patent theaters so don't forget this point now one more thing that you have to remember here bishop's ban bishop's ban is an important thing we already have talked about this thing if i'm not wrong bishop's ban 1599 remember so those who were not there in this class please write down this that bishops the religious authorities in england they had a meeting and decided that the comedy should be avoided comedy should not be performed in theaters the bishops they didn't want comedies to be performed in theaters we have discussed this thing that comedy is immoral comedy is not good so comedies were blocked but though it actually didn't happen people didn't listen to them kings and queens they themselves were watching comedies and elizabeth was a liberal one so elizabeth was not this kind of queen that she would listen to the pope and bishops and will behave what if the king or the queen behaves according to the religious orders religious ideas what kind of government is that ek aisi government jisme dharm the religion wo bahut involvement leta hai a government ruled by religious people a government which has religion as the the puritan is actually a you know a, you know type of people those who follow a strict rules and regulation the government is called presbyterian government presbyterian government is a government where the decisions are taken by religious authorities presbyterian presbyterian governments are the governments where the decisions are taken by religious authorities iran iraq maybe some other gulf countries where the governments they listen to the religious authorities the famous example of 2011 the elections of iran 
the president of Iran, Mahmoud Ahmadinejad. He became the president of Iran, but the prophet there, Ayatollah Khomeini, he called the election illegal, invalid. So he had to resign. He said, "Nay, this election is wrong." So Ayatollah Khomeini is a known prophet for uh, us because he is the one who released fatwa for Salman Rushdie. When Salman Rushdie wrote satanic verses, a fatwa was released for him. So Ayatollah Khomeini was the one who released the fatwa. When he died, some people questioned that if the fatwa has come to an end, because the person who announced fatwa, the royal order, he is dead. So they replied, the person who succeeded him, no, fatwa continues. Do you know that Salman Rushdie is in hiding? He doesn't go openly. He doesn't walk openly. He has been attacked recently. He has lost one eye. Salman Rushdie was in hiding. It's a question of KBC. Kaun banega Karodpati? Question number fourteen. When Salman Rushdie was in hiding, he used a name. What was the name? Joseph Anton. So the question was that he was using this name with this fake name, fake identity. He was living in London, but still he is in hiding. Like he, you, you won't find him in the malls and streets. So when he was using this name, Joseph Anton, this name was inspired for true uh, from two authors. You can check it on Google. It's a question, fourteen number question, KBC. So this name was inspired from two authors, Joseph Conrad, Anton Chekhov. This name, Salman Rushdie used the pseudonym when he was hiding. Joseph Conrad, a famous Polish author, Anton Chekhov, Russian author. And then check out. Got it? If it is not important, why would I even talk about it? See, you'll have to understand. If you think what I'm making you write is the only important thing for NET and JRF, and you're missing the lecture, then you're making a blunder. You are in higher level studies. We are not in schools that I'll be telling you. Okay, write down each and everything. You have to find out the crux. Salman Rushdie is a famous author, and if KBC can ask a question, and the name again has two different authors, Joseph Conrad is important Polish author. Anton Chekhov is the father of Russian literature. Leo Tolstoy, Anton Chekhov. We should know that, right? So the smartest thing is that even if I'm talking about something and you get to know some names, that's your homework. Got it? Samaj dar koi shara kafi hota hai. Because if I know those writers, you should know those writers. They are obviously they are your homework. You can write one more fact. Write down the fact if you want. Shakespeare got married too. Shakespeare got married to Anne Hathaway. Uh, test paper, please give me a test paper. Ha. Huh. Shakespeare got married to Anne Hathaway. She was eight years elder to him. She was eight years elder to Shakespeare. It is said he saved her during a fire in the theater performance. It is said he saved her. When there was a fire in the theater performances, at in the theater during a performance, fire broke out. He saved the woman, got married. There's a famous line: He praises Anne Hathaway. Anne Hathaway, she had a way. Which is again studied from various mindsets. Anne Hathaway, she had a way. Got it. Now it has been studied from various point of views. It is said that Shakespeare had two lovers or maybe two women in life. So what if his this wife was not good or away? What if we read it like this? Anne Hathaway, she is away. Because there are you know references like this. People are writers. Sometimes they give us clues. John Donne, Anne Donne, undone. John Donne was not happy with his wife. So he wrote this line: John Donne, Anne Donne, 
undone. That's a line by John Dunn. This is the job of the researchers to find out the things, to trace the things. John Dunn maybe, because it is said John Dunn was also not at least in love with his wife. <laughs> he was imprisoned immediately for his secret marriage. John Dunn, his wife Anne, and more, she became Anne Dunn. Then why is writing undone? This is the job of the researchers. You have to go over these kind of things. Anton Chekhov is the part of? No. No. Angry Young Men movement will come by 1950s and most of the authors added they are in British. When you talk about Angry Young Men movement, that will come by 1950s, especially after the Second World War, where people will be more conscious about the social gaps, issues, Poverty, unemployment, these things will be taking, uh, you know, uh, most of the pages dealing with the issues. The finest example is, look back in anger. You know the title itself, look back in anger. A person who looks happy, smiles, but whenever he shows you the real side, he turns his head back, he is angry. Look back in anger, where he curses his wife. There are various kind, uh, these kind of things, various types like, Beat generation, one of the finest. I met a hippie. Anyone who has ever met a hippie? Has spoken to a hippie? Hippies? Nomadics? Hippies are the people uh, like who do not follow the normal rules, regulations. You have met the hippie? Where? Rishikesh, did you speak to that person? Did you have some impressions on your mind? <laughs> Did they make you feel stupid? What kind of life we are living? They were? Ha, huh, they must have made you feel like that. I had the same experience. I have recorded those things. I uh, couldn't put it on YouTube. So. In Arambol Beach, Goa, there is a way to go for to Banyan Tree, and uh, you'll find hippies there. So we were just having a track to have the adventure. Then we found a man sitting under a big Banyan Tree with some two, three mattresses, very limited stuff to survive. One bucket, one uh, chai stove, kettle, nothing else. Just basics. No roof, just one cover tied with some ropes. So uh, we started talking, we got to know that he stays there only. Then, uh, and he has already served in Indian Army and now he's living. I asked, don't you go to the markets? And uh, he says, like, what should I, why should I go? I'm here, I'm fine. So maybe then I thought maybe he's unemployed. He said, no, I don't have issues related to jobs and all. He said his mother, sister, they were all working in France. He says, I have the visa, I can go whenever I want. Then why living this life? He was just fed up with this normal life. He was like, I'm fine with trees, with plants. Then the normal question I just said, are you not scared of reptiles? When you say, you are in the jungle, you are in the middle of the forest. We have done a track of 30-40 minutes to reach here. He says, one lives there, one lives there. And I say, what? And we just checked our legs. Yeah. He says, I don't trouble them, they don't trouble me. Okay, what do you eat? People like you come, they give something. Then, what's your source of income? So people who come here, sometimes they donate something. If not, some we'll go, we'll find some work. Otherwise, we'll come back. Sometimes we become tourist guides. Sometimes I take a boat to sail. No tensions, nothing. I said, no life, no future, no cars. He says, just like Bo uh, Bob Marley. He was like, is it not going? Uh, is it giving you happy happiness? Are you happy? Are you happy? I was like, ah, oh, yeah. So I was having that impression that yeah, we are living a stupid life. This man is more happy than us under a tree and he was you know he was not even uh, caring about things what's happening he says people come here they want drugs I have drugs now how do you have drugs because the others came and give it to me because the foreigners they come here so and after the conversation done he said uh, so when he said le le bhai, to itna impression to dala hi hai. he was like this only Mil gaya, hai, nahi, hai, chal hai, padhe aram se. and no problem, nothing, life chal rahe. No relatives, no responsibilities, no need of houses, no need of cars, all happy. 
So hippies actually they came in America by 1960s and 70s. The immediate result was of this uh, Second World War. What happens when you understand? Have you ever wondered about this thing? Just think about this. What if a new discovery comes and the discovery tells you that we are just experiment. There is no God. Then what will you think? What will happen to you? What will be your mindset? That there is no God. Or maybe we are worshipping the gods. They are scientists. So we all have our gods. And what if they are just scientists and we are just lab experiments? As we are making clones, what if they have done those kind of things? What if the Adam and Eve are the first people who lost their spaceship and came here? What will be your mindset the moment you realize there is no morality, no truth, the idea of truth itself is not true? Then, so you'll live a life directionless, visionless. That's why it is said if God is dead, we must invent him. Because we, we need a power to control us, to guide us. If not by power, not by force, then by morality is fear of hell. Maximum people are not God-loving people. We are God-fearing people. If God does an announcement, suppose God comes here, appears in front of you, and then does an announcement that I'm not going to listen to any prayers. No government jobs. Don't come to me. Don't come to me with the hopes of becoming rich, having a good life, healthy life, love of life, nothing. I'm not going to help you. If you want to pray, just pray. But don't expect anything. 99% people will not go to the temples. Because we go with hopes. My exam is coming. Or I want to get selected. So we are following a light. A light that has been just created. These hippies who came by 1960s or 70s, their mindset just got generated because of Second World War. A nuclear blast. Atom blast. Your life is futile. Our life is not in our control. We know that, but we don't understand that. What will we be doing if we get to know this is the last day of our life? Agar hume lagta hai, hamari ka last din hai aaj. Aaj last din. Why would I take a class? Or bahut kaam hai life. <laughs> will you come to the class if these are the last 24 hours of your life? Then... Nobody will come to the class. I know. Then why can't we live a life where every day is the last day of life? Carpet time philosophy. Because the control of our lives. What if Ukraine, Russia fight with nuclears? We are all dead. We will die. Kim Jong has yesterday changed his general and uh, told the army to be ready for the war. So we have people like Kim Jong. We have people like Vladimir Putin. We have people like the American president and others. So your life, my life is in their hands. And there are thousands of reasons that can kill us. So if our life is momentary and we are not sure about the next day, why can't we live this life, live this day at least? So the hippies have found this idea. That's called beat generation. You must have seen a Bollywood song uh, of Devanand. Hare Krishna, Hare Ram. If you have not seen that, was that. 1960s, 70s ka bahut pop song tha apne ka wo. So they are all having the covers and it seems they are religious people. Hare Krishna, Hare Ram. But they all have their filled cigarettes. So what is this combination? Drugs and Hare Krishna, Hare Ram. The hippie mindset. That if the God is truth and rest is fake and the rest is just a tragedy, then why should we, we be the part of the tragedy? Just follow the God and live your life. To be happy, drug is the easiest way. Not official recommendation. Okay? I have no official recommendation. I don't know if I'm still here. Look at this, look at this, look at this. But they had this mindset. So beat generations in the 70s, 80s, so many hippies in the America. Uh, the concept of Iskon temple and the man who is behind uh, Iskon. Swami Prabhu, uh, uh, Prabhu Pada, right? He was the man who gave them some ideas. He tried to civilize those hippies following Bhagavad Gita's ideas. So Bhagavad Gita is completely existential. It tells you there is nothing that doesn't belong to you. Na koi tumhara hai na tum kisi ke ho. 
so they wanted to have this kind of life he is the one who civilized and he had a great fan following again he had also had some controversies then acharya rajneesh the media name is osho before we go for the test i tell you this thing what happened uh, when i joined delhi university so in my small area it was a news for everyone that one of us is teaching in university of delhi now so people would come to me guide my kid tell my child what to do tell my future this and that so once a family came husband wife and the uh, husband was lawyer i knew him i was like yes tell me how can i help you he says uh, my kid wants to take arts humanities so i was like oh ho oh, oh. ho they are the people who want their kid to take science because they discern they hate people who go for humanities i said what's the problem it's okay there are better options in humanities arts and all in medical you'll become doctor in uh, non medical you'll become engineer in arts you can become ias <laughs> so he was like no 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 that's not the problem our son is very good in studies so we asked him if you don't want to go for science go for commerce but again he says no 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 i want to go for arts i was like okay then what's the problem sir in the arts he wants to go for philosophy so i said just tell him that philosophy is not that much good especially uh, from job point of view career point of view philosophy professors normally in colleges you don't have philosophy teachers in universities you may have philosophy professors then they were like sir the problem is we don't want him to take philosophy and he is adamant to take philosophy now my mind started working because in my area if somebody is stubborn to go for philosophy i must know that i must know the reason why philosophy kyun padhna chahta hai hamare yahan ka bachcha and they were like sir he is not listening he says agar arts mein lunga to one subject only only philosophy nothing else there is this and then i was like uh, okay uh, tell me about his friends sir he doesn't have any friends social media presence no sir he is far away from mobile phones and okay video games no sir now if a 10th class kid is not doing these things he has to go for his options in 11th and is not doing these things he doesn't have friends he doesn't go out he doesn't have mobile phone <laughs> normally a kid does then i said okay what kind of books he reads what kind of literature he has and they both smiled sir he reads osho <laughs> my family follows osho we all follow osho he has been reading osho since 7th class i folded my hands sir i can't teach that boy <laughs> you are this young boy's brain is developing that's under development osho can spoil anybody's brain you read osho start following him osho also has existential mindset existence existential identity is the real identity that's the ultimate truth but if you teach the boy 7th 8th and 9th class and tell him that it's all futile it's all fake you want to have success you will have success but what if you're not happy success doesn't guarantee you happiness money doesn't guarantee you happiness and to be happy you don't have to be successful you don't have to have a lot of money then so if you have given osho chote bacche ko osho padhaoge maine kaha sir wo mujhe padha dega main usse kya padhau so this is the you know the mindset of hippies or people like this but when you read and study literature and like i have also gone in the depth of existential that's reality that's the reality of life rest all is fake it's all mithya it's all based on a fundamental lie the existentials simply say we are aliens casted in an alien universe with no inherent truth at all there is no truth it's all meaningless the moment you understand the meaninglessness of your life you'll be away from all those pain suffering you are not the one there are people like you there will be people like you you're not having the tragedy there are people like you there will be people like you you are nobody so the day you realize we are nobody remember voyager 2 has crossed our galaxy that's a intergalactic device now so once it clicked earth and sent a photo to the nasa so the nasa director came with a speech the photo of earth was just like the nib of the pen voyager jo hamari galaxy se bahar chala gaya hai usne earth ki photo khinchi di 
just blue point this of a pen this is again a marker that's earth in universe if that's earth who are you who is me hum hai kon then why should we take things seriously and if you are not able to tolerate we commit suicide why ho kya hai is pe kya hai hum kuch nahi hai Thank mm-hmm. you.